was frightened by the irrationality of it. I remember an interview with one of the Dockers on television in which he said that Dockers were tolerant and moderate people, but when our women are threatened, then we stand up. And I wanted to shout at the television and say, what do you mean by your women being threatened? Who's threatening your women? And I get a speech of Mr Powell's force and drama and extremism stirred in all sorts of not very thinking people every imaginable sort of fear. And I remember thinking, if this docker thinks somehow his women are under threat, well, we are getting to a very dangerous situation, a very dangerous situation indeed. I was in Birmingham at the time, talking to West Indians about it. They were genuinely frightened. They thought, if he can say that, then it is a kind of invitation to people who hold racist opinions anyway to act on them. It certainly was a call to mobilization. Don't just talk about London and the West Midlands. My constituency was in Devon, and the atmosphere there was absolutely electric. If Enoch Powell had stood to be leader of the Conservative Party, he'd have had a landslide at that weekend. And I dare say, if he'd then stood to be Prime Minister, he would have had a national landslide. It was that dramatic, the degree of support and the intensity of it. 2,000 signatures in two days. A letter to the press, 88% of Slough people say they support Enoch Powell. 88% Slough people. Powell received 100,000 letters and 700 telegrams following his speech. Less than 1% challenged his views. He wanted saying he was supporting the people he represented. He was put there by the people uh, you know. and he also could only be took away by the people. This is the first really. time we've had a champion. This is, this is the first time we've had somebody to speak up for what the people, the working class people, think and feel to be right. Opinion polls showed that up to 80% of those questioned agreed with Powell's comments about immigrants. One week after the speech, the Labour Minister, Dick Crossman, wrote, We are still absolutely dominated by the effect of his Birmingham speech. He has stirred up the nearest thing to a mass movement since the 1930s, all part of a response to a very simple appeal. No more bloody immigrants in this country. Anyone who dared oppose Powell's views faced a furious response. Powell's now ex-friend, the editor Clement Jones, tried to balance out the 5,000 letters in support of the speech which he received at the Wolverhampton Express and Star. He was getting calls at home uh, from people saying, is that the bloody nigger lover? He was getting letters with uh, used toilet paper, uh, bricks through the window. I mean, my father and mother had made a stand. They'd made a stand. The situation for immigrants and their families was no better. I personally, and I think probably many other black people too, felt very uncomfortable, obviously, because then we became even more the object of um, a kind of racism uh, that was legitimated in one sense by uh, this speech. You didn't feel safe. There was that sense of, OK, the gloves are off. I was in a school playground when people came up to me and said, I heard what Mr Powell had said. I remember vividly there was a long crocodile of children, every one of them, I suspect, black or at least Asian. And I thought, these are the people he's talking about. And I immediately thought of the damage this was going to do to them, that all over Britain, racism had suddenly been made respectable because... Normally, this sort of thing is said in the bars of the worst sort of public houses. But suddenly, this was told by a man in 
pinstripe trousers, black jacket, Homburg hat. He was told by a respectable figure. That was my initial feeling, and it was why I hated him then and why I hate him now. Powell now faced a backlash from those who passionately opposed his views. A cross-section of British society from middle-class liberals to radical students mobilised against him. Even the world's most famous pop group got in on the act, recording a song originally intended as a satire on Powell's views. He faced vehement opposition wherever he appeared. For your intelligent reception and for your demonstration of the academic principle of freedom of speech. It was a growing anti-racist movement. It had to get up to speed quite quickly because then you started to get these acts of violence, uh, verbal violence and physical violence against black and Asian people. I'm now going to call the Right Honourable Enoch Powell, MP for Wolverhampton South West. Powell refused to retract a single word of his speech. He used the 1968 Tory party conference to embarrass his leader still further by calling for voluntary repatriation. Too often today, 